Peruvian Baptist Church, bringing you Bible studies from the Gospel of Mark. I've got some really good Peruvian coffee here today, roasted just past first crack. And we have a neat passage, so I'm looking forward to getting into it with you. But first, uh, some of you might have noticed that I did not post on Monday or Wednesday of this week. One of the reasons for that is that I was able to teach Sunday school at church, so praise the Lord. Some things are definitely improving in terms of my health. And I'll leave a video, to, I'll leave a, dis a link to that in the video description below so you can watch that lesson if you'd like. It's on Psalm 85, a fantastic psalm. Another reason, though, that I haven't been posting is that while some of my aspects of my health are improving, others are staying the same, and there may be some new issues. And I'm hoping to have some doctor's appointments here soon to shed some light on some things. But I need to be really careful with what I do and with what I don't do in the next couple of weeks. So I would appreciate your continued prayers for my healing. Uh, it is, patience is difficult for us humans. Uh, we that bear the, the curse and the burdens of sin have a hard time with patience. And I appreciate your prayers as God teaches me through this. But today, we are going to be in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 21 through, tw through 29. As always, my hope here is to give you something brief and practical, something you can pack up and take with you for the rest of the day. I'm going to be picking up in verse 21. And he said unto them, Jesus says to those who are listening, his audience, and the people most interested in his teaching probably, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifest. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. That last phrase, verse 23, is really interesting. You should do a study on that in the book of Revelation. It appears often in the first couple chapters. And it's basically a way of, it's a way Jesus says, pay attention, listen to this. This is really important. It may sound strange at first, but it's really important. So why is he talking about candles and bushels and things like that? Well, very simply this. There are two ways to understand the parable. They're both related, though. They're not really that different. The first is to understand that the light or the candle is Jesus, and Jesus is saying that he is going to be brought to light, which is true. He is going to come as Savior and also as Judge. The other way is to understand that the candle is our works, that we are to let our light shine before men, as versions of this parable appear elsewhere. But this may be a completely different parable. You need to be careful trying to interpret Mark through Matthew. Jesus told different parables at different times for different reasons. So. Let's just apply the simple truth. Everything that we do will be brought to light by the light of the world. That is enormously significant. If you have ears, you should be hearing this. That is an important message. Everything you do in private, everything you do in here, everything that goes on in here, everything that you do on this machine, and you delete your browser history afterwards, will be brought to light by the light of the world. That's, that's heavy, that's significant, for good or bad. That means that when we do right and nobody cares, nobody listens, that means even if we die for it, eventually we will be vindicated. That means also when we do wrong and everybody praises us and applauds us for the person that they think we are, eventually it will come to light. That's significant. And so he says to them as he continues, take heed what you hear, or in other words, watch out, pay attention. This is important. This is significant. With what measure you meet or with or the way that you give to people or the way that you give, it shall be measured unto you. And unto you that hear, more shall be given. For he that has, to him it shall be given. And he that has not, from him shall be taken, even that which he has. So here Jesus is applying the general biblical law of sowing and reaping. You get what you give, generally, very generally speaking. Uh, he's applying that to the practice of listening to and applying the word of God. When you listen to and apply the word of God, when you hear it and take heed to it, then you will get more truth. When you fail to do that, then even the truth that you understand will begin to slip away from you. You might understand more facts. You might be able to open your Bible and memorize things and read your Bible and know doctrine. But you will become increasingly estranged from truth if you're not applying that truth to your life. Judgment is coming based on our actions and how much we understand, what we do with the truth that we have. Take heed how you hear. Pay attention to what you hear and apply it. And so Jesus continues with the parables, and he says in verse 26, So is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like this. If a man should cast seed to the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, the seed should spring up and grow. He knows not how. For the earth brings forth the fruit. And he, he gives the whole progress of the crop. And the man, the farmer, today and back then, really doesn't understand all the details of how each of these things happens. 
But when the crop is fully grown, in verse 29, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, when we think of Jesus' parables, harvests and sickles should make us think of judgment. There might be an element of judgment here in this parable, as there certainly is in what he says in verses 24 and 25. But what's the big point of this parable? The big point of this parable is at the end of verse 27, the man knows not how. He sows the seed, he does something, but he doesn't really understand how the seed bears fruit. And we see this when we apply it to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like this situation too. We should do work, we should labor, we should sow seed, but the power that's driving this is really far beyond our understandings. Our efforts are meaningful. Don't get me wrong, our efforts are absolutely meaningful. And judgment does come at the end. The sickle is put in and the harvest is done at the end. But the power driving this, we don't understand. And that's okay. That's okay. So, how do we wrap this all up? Well, it's a simple one today. Decide and do right, knowing that everything will come to the light of day by the light of the world. And we will give an account for the gifts that have been given to us. We will reap a harvest. Even if we don't understand how it's going to come, we will reap a harvest for good or for bad. If this has been helpful to you, I encourage you to, to share it with others, to like it, to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find solid biblical teaching uh, posted many times throughout the week. And I'll put a link to our church website below if you'd like to learn more about us. We do services, uh, both live stream services and in-person services. Uh, until next time, this has been Pastor Schuyler in the Gospel of Mark. God bless.